So I want to hear from each of you, what are leaders doing differently to connect their team members to purpose, success, and one another? And will we see some marked changes that will continue between how leaders and employees interact with each other as we move forward? Asad, let's start with you on this answer and uh, get your feedback, please. Thank you. I think one of the things, um, and, and thank you, Gary, for, 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 for the question. I think one of the things that we're equipping leaders to do is, is removing some of the stigma associated with mental health and wellness. Um, again, that, that is going to be one of the pivotal focuses for HR globally going forward. And so I think, um, you know, helping leaders with the tools and the techniques to um, look at people's uh, mental health and wellness, address it, have the resources and the right resources um, at the right time. Um, and if they don't, they don't have all the questions because not uh, sometimes these, uh, these things can be challenging um, to have the right um, HR business partners and resources, whether it's through an EAP program to help, um, you know, solve them, especially when we're working in a virtual way in this new kind of hybrid workforce. So I think that's one of the, um, the biggest tools that leaders are getting is a little bit more support from a mental health and wellness perspective to address those questions. I'd say the other thing that we are focusing, and I, I call it the basics, some of the things that we sometimes take for granted is around, you know, the human element of leadership. So authenticity, authenticity vulnerability, sensitivity, really getting them to focus on that. It used to be, if I think about it, results, 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 financial results, year over year improvement. And that's still going to be there. But, and so many people have already talked about it. Um, people are the assets of, a, of an organization. I, you know, our, our CEO always talks about our people being the, um, you know, the, the assets, a family, um, you know, whenever we make decisions, some of the tough decisions we've had to make, one Cineplex uh, team that had to make these decisions over the last year. So really, um, you know, getting people and, and leaders to, um, to connect with individuals. And I'd say the other, the other bit, for me is really changing the dynamic of kind of how we hire leaders going forward, really looking for that DNA around some of these things, whether it's vulner vulnerability, authenticity, it's no longer just, you know, how many, how much sales someone did, but what was your team engagement score? What were the things that you did when you had crises on your team? Those are some of the things that I think um, that we're beginning to intertwine in and then organizations will intertwine in their hiring practices. And it's worked for a lot of big organizations. Um, you know, if I think about a company like um, Disney, one of their, what was in their DNA always was around customer service. And so they were just absolutely consistent when it came to customer service. I think kind of like that, you're going to have, um, you know, mental health and wellness built into, um, you know, how you hire leaders of tomorrow. Very helpful. I, I, I couldn't agree more. This notion of uh, asking our leaders to shift that focus. And we've seen that shift from moving from doers to influencers, but intentionally reinforcing that role, you are influencing, you are connecting. And the requirements there and the skill set is moving from a traditional approach to leadership to a very different modern approach. Thank you very much. So I appreciate that. Uh, Shireen, we'd like to hear from you. To reiterate a lot around really this new notion of leadership. Le I, we call it leading from the heart, being authentic. Talk about, have those conversations about mental health issues. And even as leaders, just be transparent for what's going on for, for example, for myself, what's going on for myself and connect from that to help people feel at ease to then talk about themselves when it comes to these um, issues. We have also implemented, um, we find because of the remote work we have as well, we implemented recognition platform. Recognition platform is not just about what, how, what you recognize around what you do at work, but also maybe you have set personal goals for yourself that you'd like to achieve. And it's a culture of celebration. Let's celebrate the small things. And that really will help um, the team, help all of us um, change that, you know, enforce more that positive culture. Another thing that I find um, for my team that we have implemented because of this remote work as well and a different collaboration, it's to be innovative, we need to collaborate. 
And one of the things we have, we have dedicated collaboration times on a weekly basis that the whole team joins for that collaboration. But at the same time, we have reutilized technology like Teams. We have an open channel that is for communication. The whole team is on it. And if anyone have any questions, whether it's related to work or something outside of work, they can post a question there and people respond. And it keeps that momentum of engagements um, going and as leaders to encourage that this is not a waste of time this is not just just allow for different methodologies for the team to connect in whatever that can serve them it's truly valuable and it helps the team feel so connected um, we have also implemented um, different programs whether it's from um, it, mental health as well as joining a gym workout it's an online gym workout it's um different learning programs and speakers that we brought um and just encouraging our workforce to join and take time to to connect with that and as a leader really as leaders take time to connect and as leaders um encourage the your employees to collect to connect as well Great. Thank you very much, Shireen, for those uh, ideas and, and that response. Susan, what are your thoughts as well? Yeah, and I think I echo a lot of the things uh, that I heard from Shireen, and I loved you know, the emphasis on um, connecting with people differently. And I heard, you know, whether it's teams and having uh, that open forum to ask questions that anybody can answer, almost in a social learning um, type environment. I think that those are critical. I think the other thing that we had to be more deliberate about is because we are not face to face and there's no water cooler for us to walk around and, and connect with, um, we've had to create a water cooler-esque experience in a, in a virtual space. And whether you create those in teams or you just have a hangout session, almost like open hours, where you have a WebEx group that's just set up and anybody can hop in and say, hey, and, you know, Maria, meet me at one o'clock in the open room and we can have a conversation about this. Um, there's those opportunities. But I also think that taking it back to business results, which are still critical, this is an opportunity for us to have more dialogue with our associates around how the meaningful work that they're doing every day drives a business unit goal that is subsequently driving an organizational goal. Because that connection between what I'm doing here in my job and what our, stake, our shareholder equity is being driven by are connected. And making sure that people see that connectivity between what they do and the organizational success is driving engagement and it's critical to our success. And so the one other thing that I'll say is tools that we use like Standout allow people to see that the tasks that they're doing and checking off at the end of a week or a day are being driven by focus areas that are being driven by organizational results. And you can use technology to have those conversations and you can have WebEx teams that are hyper-focused on your goal, whatever this corporate goal is. And here's what I'm doing to drive it today. And what are you doing? And it's an opportunity for you to connect and to chat. The last thing I'll say is on our intranet page, we welcome our most senior leaders of the organization to write blogs. And these leaders post about their experience. We have leaders who work in Canada but are from the U.S. Or we have leaders who work in uh, Canada um, but are supporting U.S. or other global entities. And they write these blogs and talk about their experience and give everyone an opportunity to lean in for a minute and understand their world and kind of demystify some of the things that you may have misunderstood uh, for the longest time. And I think that that connectivity, again, does both communicate that we talked about earlier, it engages, and it helps us be inspired to drive our corporate mission forward. I love this theme of connectivity and connection uh, that's so important. And, and one of the things that we've discovered at OC Tanner through our research is that when we connect with employees, two things, and, and you mentioned both of them, Susan. One is this notion of reminding people why what they do makes a difference, how it connects to shareholder value or our overall purpose, or Maria, you mentioned values before, what difference is it making? And not just the work, but how you individually uniquely contribute, 
right? What is it about you as an employee that makes a difference for us? And I think that creates a sense of connection, engagement, and a sense of belonging, right, as well. And I just love this notion of finding opportunities to connect with each other and to support one another. And that leadership opportunity, that refocus is so important. Maria, I want to um, give you a couple of minutes. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic as well. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I think that this question of leadership is a, a fantastic one. Um, and I think it's one that I personally have seen such a shift uh, that's happened as a result of the pandemic. You know, I think as we look back over the last year and a half, we can all name off awful things that have happened in society, if businesses have closed, you know, all sorts of unfortunate things. As I look at leadership, I actually see a, a lot of positives that have happened as a result. Um, you know, as I look within manual life uh, and, I, and I look at all of our values, the one that really comes to mind is share your humanity. Uh, and I have to say that is the one that has been most demonstrated over the last year and a half. Um, you know, uh, it's about, to me, leadership has always been about vulnerability, uh, transparency, um, and being able to connect with your teams on, on that level, on a very personal, um, personal level. I think that just builds trust and in the end really has a uh, long-term impact on engagement, uh, loyalty, uh, your ability to retain talent and attract talent. And I think that's something we've really seen come out of this, this pandemic. Um, you know, as I think back around all of the things that our leadership has done, uh, whether they're the Ask Me Anything meetings, the, the, all the fun things that we've done, whether it's Camp Manulife for the kids or Manulife has talent. It, it was, uh, it, what we really saw was our leadership team being vulnerable and, and really sharing a part of themselves that employees rarely got to see. I would say in the past, it was about the business results and about, you know, we'd hear from leadership uh, when the quarterly results came out and it was very business focused, you got to see a whole other side of what our uh, leadership is about. Now, that's not to say the focus on the business isn't there, but I've actually, uh, we've seen that accelerate our business tremendously. It's actually uh, driven our mission uh, forward much quicker than um, was, was originally planned. So we've seen a tremendous impact of the shift and, and the leadership that's happened. Uh, we've seen the focus on employee well-being just skyrocket. Asad mentioned earlier the, the focus on mental health and just talking about it and making it okay to, to just even have that conversation, which didn't happen in the past. So I think the one of the outcomes of the pandemic is a very positive shift in leadership uh, for the long term. And I, for one, personally, am very excited about that. Wonderful. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts on that particular topic. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, business results and what we've talked about in terms of leadership requirements and, and a shift in that are not mutually exclusive. They, they We're finding, interestingly enough, again, as Assad, uh, you know, referred to this as the event, <laughs> has allowed us to see some things and, and quite act actually respond in ways that our research has indicated over uh, a number of years to the things that really matter most to employees in their decision to join, engage with, and stay at your organizations. It's that desire to connect, right, and to 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 feel and to connect in ways that we've talked about today. And they want to deliver great results. People naturally want to do great work. And if we continue to intentionally create workplace environments where people feel confident and connected and can thrive and can really bring their whole selves to work and engage fully, those business results 
take care of themselves. And, and uh, I just couldn't agree more. Thank you again so much to all of you for taking time and, and sharing your insights with us. Um, I'd like to mention to all of those who are watching or participating in this session that if you'd like to learn more or read more about workplace culture, um, I invite you to go to octanner.com and review our latest global culture report. Uh, each year we publish a uh, global report on workplace culture and we've been addressing and will continue to address many of the topics that we've talked about. One of the unique things about our research that we do is it is completely from the employee's perspective. And as we think about how we respond and how we move forward, uh, it's helpful to know, again, what are those things that are most important to employees so that we can be intentional about creating workplace cultures where our people can thrive. Thanks again so much, uh, great information. I wish we could go on for another a uh, couple of days. Maybe we'll have to revisit this and invite you back again. Much appreciated. Thanks all.